Hello, and welcome to today's webinar, Adapting to the Future, How Bulimo EPIV is Revolutionizing Data Center Cooling. Our presenter today is David Kandel, Data Center Solutions Architect for Bulimo. We appreciate your joining us. My name is Maureen, or Mo Williams, Training Solutions Specialist at Bulimo, and I will be your moderator. As a friendly reminder, these webinars are recorded and will be posted to Bulimo's YouTube page and Bulimo University, our free online training platform located at bulimouniversity.myabsorb.com. If you're experiencing any technical issues, please open the chat box in the bottom right corner and let me know so I can assist you. Without further ado, I would like to introduce you to David Kandel. Thank you, Maureen. I appreciate that. And thanks to everybody for joining us today. We're excited to present to you Adapting to the Future, How the Bulimo EPIV is Revolutionizing Data Center Cooling. On the screen in front of you, there's a big old QR code. We wrote a blog post about this topic. If you are more of a written word type person and you want to read what we had to say, please go ahead and scan that. and It'll take you right to our uh, blog post. And then if there are any questions during the training, unfortunately, we'll not be answering them during the webinar, but the email on the bottom right-hand corner will get you to our training group, training at us.belimo.com. Please submit all your questions there. We will get back to you within the next couple of days. All right, let's get started. Uh, my job for Belimo is to run around and talk to data center people. I talk to engineers, I talk to contractors, I talk to lots of people who own and operate data centers, and those are the folks that I get really interesting answers from. So let's ask the questions of the data center owners. Oftentimes I hear from people that data centers are, are really simple to cool. They're, they're fixed load type places. We just put computers in a dark room with no windows and the heat's always the same. So cooling it must be the same. But we need to shift our paradigm because the world we live in is shifting. The data center universe is shifting. And when I talk to the data center owners, they ask me questions like, how do I stay balanced hydronically when I build out a data center? So what are they talking about? Let's move over to a data center and take a look. Let's say we're building a data center. It's a big old building. Maybe we block it into different data halls or what have you. But the day the construction's completed, that building is empty. We have a bunch of cooling systems in place, but there probably aren't computers in place. We're not generating a bunch of load yet, so there's hardly anything going on inside that building. On the first day, maybe we have a bunch of people who are excited to get into the building. We got their equipment in place. We're going to need to figure out how to cool that down, but is the building balanced for these few computers? A whole full load, part of the building? Who knows? Six months in, we get a little bit more fill. It, within a year, we're mostly full, maybe out year two or three, that data center's full and chugging along. The point of the matter is, is that if we think about a standard type commercial HVAC project, our load shifts from minute to minute. We open doors, we close doors, we've got people coming and going, we're turning equipment on and off. But when we think about it, the data center, minute to minute, the loads aren't changing very frequently, but over time, they definitely are, whether it's moving computers in and out of our space or what happens when the heat densities change. So if we go back to our data center and we take a look at what we're doing here, we have our data center and this has a particular heat load on the computers that are in place here. And then maybe a different client moves into that space and they have a particularly heat dense uh, type application and then maybe somebody else moves in and they have more and then a few years go by and the technology updates so we have even more heat here and then eventually we have more heat there and more heat uh, oh, well all over the place if you're in the data center space you know exactly what i'm talking about heat densities are out of control right now they're shifting massively and if you run a co-location type facility you have customers coming to you and saying hey i have super heat dense Com com uh, computers I need to put in your space, are you able to cool it? Are we ready to go? Is your building prepared for what we're going to do? These are real challenges, and this puts us in a space where the idea of using pressure independent control valves give us a lot of flexibility. 
the reason that pressure independent control valves are so valuable in the commercial HVAC space is they take all the nonsense out of cooling a building. Yeah, loads shift up and down and people come in and out of spaces. And we turn equipment on and turn equipment off or the sun's shining on the building or it's not shining on the building. All of these things change the loads in all of our spaces. If I close down two floors of a building, uh, the other remaining floors are affected by the change in the hydronic system. So all kinds of things go on and pressure independent valves make all of this go away. They hydronically isolate whatever they're controlling the water flow to. So if we exchange that to our heat exchange equipment inside of a data center, well, now we have some real advantage. Let's move forward to where we all are thinking about these days. What about liquid cooling? What if our data center space is all completely balanced out and then one guy comes in and says, oh, by the way, I'm gonna use rear door heat exchangers on mine and I'm gonna need a lot more water or I'm gonna need a lot more heating capacity. So let's talk about some of the equipment that we're gonna wind up in space when we adopt liquid cooling solutions. Let's start with a cooling distribution unit or a CDU. A CDU is a cabinetized heat exchanger that we're gonna put in the space or near the space. It allows us to take the chilled or cooled water from a central loop of some kind and exchange that heat uh, onto the technology side and whatever fluid or liquid and whatever temperature we want that fluid coming out. Well, we're always gonna need to control the flow on the central uh, loop side, on the, the building side of this loop, if you will and a pressure independent valve and an EPIV is always a good option here. It allows us to have constant and measurable flow uh, input into that device. If you want 43 gallons a minute going in there, this type of product will make sure you have 43 gallons a minute going all day, every day, until you do ask it to do something else. So where does the, all the fluid from these CDUs go? Well, they're gonna go out into the technology space, obviously, and they're gonna address some other types of equipment. So let's start with the rear door heat exchanger. The rear door heat exchanger just has a coil that runs through uh, a set in the back of the rack. Some of them are active, meaning they have fans that blow that air or, or draw that air through the servers. Uh, some of them are passive so that they're just in place and the natural airflow of the building pull it through. But we're going to need fluid control to each of these. We're going to run cool water through each of these heat exchangers. Here you can see a whole array of Belimo EPIVs controlling rear door heat exchangers. Why would they have selected the EPIV for this application? Again, constant flow. You want to know exactly how much flow is going through there. Oh, by the way, there's a flow meter in each EPIV, which means I can also measure the flow. So not only am I controlling to 16 gallons a minute or 10 gallons a minute or whatever my GPM is, but I'm reporting that back to wherever that control's coming from. So not only am I asking for that flow value, but I can verify uh, that that's exactly how much water's going through there. So rear door cooling is an option. What about direct to chip cooling, sometimes known as cold plate? Well, cold plate are a series of little heat exchangers that sit on top of the, uh, the actual server chips inside of these server banks. And we're gonna run cool fluid through them to pull the heat right off of those processor chips. And we're gonna control the flow to those guys. Well, each one of these uh, servers that's in this rack is going to need a very specific amount of flow rate and we can utilize this type of valve to make sure that we maintain the exact flows we're looking for and have the perfect heat exchange through there. Now you might be thinking to yourself, well, if we have a fixed flow, we can just put some kind of flow limiting device in there. We can put a standard pressure independent kind of control valve in there. There's a lots of options and there are but I'll tell you something about the EPIV that gives us a lot of flexibility. This valve is programmable and it's networkable. So we'll leave it at that for a minute, but we're gonna revisit that as to why this offers such a superior solution to some of the more simple technologies. What's another type of uh, 
heat exchange here? How about single phase or even two phase immersion cooling? Well, in these, we're also going to need control valves. We're also going to need uh, some opportunity to control the flow into those guys to address the heat exchange. So whether we're using cold plates or or immersion cooling or rear door or any other type of liquid cooling, if it's liquid cooling by nature, we're gonna need to control the flow. We're gonna need to do it precisely, accurately. We're gonna need control abilities over that. And we're gonna need to be able to be versatile over time. We know that whatever the heat loads are in our space today, you could build a data center tomorrow that's fully geared up for liquid cooling. And two years from now, the heat demand in that space, the, the demand for removing heat is going to be more, it's going to be higher than it is today. We need the ability to be flexible. And this is where the Belimo EPIB shines. The EPIB stands for Electronic Pressure Independent Control Valve. And it's a really clever device. If we take a look at it here, this is a cutaway of a, obviously a larger sized EPIB. And what we're going to do is we're going to pass water through the valve. It's gonna go through the flow meter, which is on the right side there, and then through the control valve. What this allows us to do is run a control logic not dissimilar to how a VAV box works in a standard HVAC application. We're gonna measure the fluid flow rate, in this case, the liquid flow rate. So we're gonna measure the flow with an ultrasonic flow sensor. Then we're gonna use the actuator to receive a control signal from the automation system and compare that to the flow value that's currently being measured. Then, the actuator can decide whether to modulate the valve or not based on whether we're at the correct flow, below or above the correct flow. So we're going to be able to modulate the valve to get to the flow we want. So if we use a specific example, let's say the automation system sending a 50% command to the control valve, 50% for the way that this control valve is programmed is 45 gallons a minute. It will look at the flow meter's flow rate, if it's above 45 gallons a minute, it will simply modulate the valve more closed until it gets to 45 gallons a minute, and then it will stay there. It will check over time to make sure it's still at 45 gallons a minute, and will make changes if necessary to stay there. There's a lot of advantages to utilizing the EPIV. Obviously, we're going to control directly to a flow rate. We've talked about that a few times. If my rack of cold plates needs nine gallons a minute, I want nine gallons a minute. I want nine gallons a minute, whether all the other cold plates are running, whether none of them are running, whether there's high pressure in the pump, whether there's low pressure in the pump, whatever the heck is going on in that circuit, I want nine gallons a minute to my cold plates. I want nine gallons a minute to my rear door heat exchanger, or I want nine gallons a minute going into my immersion cooling. It doesn't matter. The point is we want specific flows and that's what we can do here. The other thing that's interesting about this valve is that it has a programmable characteristic. So if you're familiar with control valves, you know that typically they have what's known as an equal percentage flow characteristic. This is a, uh, an exponential curve that allows the valve to open quite slowly and then uh, have a much higher curve flow rate as we get the valve more open. This is the opposite behavior of how coils work, and so it makes a good match for a coil. However, if we're trying to uh, control specific flow rates or specific fixed flow rates, we can reprogram this valve to be linear so that if you make a 10% change in the control signal, you just get a 10% change in the flow rate. And so predicting exactly how much water correlates with your control signals becomes very simple. Another great advantage that we've talked about is our ability to measure flow. We're measuring it in the system. This is reportable information. Even if you don't network this valve, the analog feedback signal from this valve can measure and report the flow value. So if we've plugged all these valves in and we've run all the feedbacks, we can sit at a single uh, computer terminal and take a look at the flow rates of all of our 
uh, equipment on all of our racks. We can set alarms if there's disparity between the measured flow rate and the required flow rate and give us so much more information that we, than we can get from simple mechanical devices. The other option which really makes a big difference is the fact that these valves are available with BACnet and Modbus capability, which means I can network them completely. This allows me to reprogram the maximum flow rate of my valve. So today I need 10 gallons a minute to run my liquid cold plate racks, but two years from now I might need 12 or 14 gallons a minute. As long as we've selected a valve that has more capacity than we need today, it can simply be reprogrammed. So if we compare the EPID, which we claimed at the beginning was revolutionizing what we're doing here, if we compare this type of technology to a mechanical pressure independent valve, which you can also change the flow rates on, but it's a manual operation, which means I have to go touch the valve to reprogram that. I could use a flow setter valve, which is not pressure, it, 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 it just limits the top end flow, so you would put it next to a pressure dependent valve for the on-off portion, and it would have a maximum flow. And many of those types of devices, you can change the flow rate as well. But none of those devices will report the flow rate, and none of those de devices are remote reprogrammable. This gives us a huge advantage. So whether I have a single rack of cold plates and I wanna control the flow and maybe change it over time, I can do this remotely if I need to. And even if I go to my rear door heat exchanger and I have a dozen or so, and I don't wanna to touch 12 of these guys, I can sit at a terminal and reprogram them. And what if my entire facility, sorry, what if my entire facility requires liquid cooling operations. I have this available to me. Even when all of my heat loads get hot, and even if my data center is not just a little data center, but a massive data center. Imagine you have this type of number of rows of racks, and you have this many control valves that you want to be able to control, see just how much flow is going through each of them, and reprogram when necessary. Remember the scope of what we're talking about here. So you might be sitting there and saying, I don't know that I need this much valve in order to control a single whatever, but you're never doing one. The scope of what we're doing makes it invaluable that none of the rest of these racks is going to control the flow to the one you're interested in, because they're hydronically independent of one another. We can read the flow rates of every single valve in this building and write alarms if they're off from what they're supposed to be. And we can sit at a terminal and reprogram every single one of these to whatever flow we want should that need arise. The reality is, is that the EPIV is revolutionizing data center cooling, and we're really excited about this product and how it can help you. So thank you for joining us today on Adapting to the Future, how the Bolimo EPIV is revolutionizing data center cooling. As a reminder, if you have questions, please forward them to training at us.bolimo.com and go ahead and scan that QR code if you wanna read our blog article about the EPIV. Thanks for joining us. I'm gonna turn it back over to Maureen. Thank you so much, David, and thank you all for joining us today. As David mentioned, uh, we will not have time to answer questions during the webinar, but we will be happy to respond by email. So I do see a question has come in. Rest assured, we will respond to you. And if you should think of additional questions, feel free to email the training team at training at us.blimo.com. I also invite you all to follow Belimo on social media to keep informed about what's happening. And if you're interested in additional trainings, you can sign up for our mailing list on the training page of Bolimo.com. That is all that we have time for today. Thank you so much and have a great day.